Okay, hi, Jim McConnell, McConnell Labs, manufacturers of Light Elegance nail products. This is Chemist Corner regarding exothermic reactions and how do we measure those. So measuring an exothermic, exo, exothermic reaction is important because it's the amount of heat that your client will feel when the gel is placed on top of the fingernail and then cured. The higher the exothermic reaction, the more the heat is being generated. One important feature, one comment I have to make right now, a lot of people think that the heat that's being generated on top of the fingernails during the curing process is a result of the uh, molecules of the gel running around and creating some sort of, um, some sort of increase in temperature based on the resistance or the friction of those molecules. That is completely a farce. That is incorrect 100% of the way. So what actually happens is every time a bond is being formed during the polymerization reaction, that bond formation will emit or generate a certain amount of heat. The more bonds that are being formed, the more heat that's being generated. The shorter time frame that all those bonds are formed, the more heat that the client will experience. It's not that it generates more heat, or less heat, it's just the amount of heat that's being generated in a shorter period of time becomes uncomfortable. If you can draw out that length of cure cycle or the heat ex exothermic reactions being taken place, then you get less heat being felt by the client. So that's a key feature as well. So when we measure the amount of that exothermic reaction, there are a few ways we can do it. We can do it with something like uh, a, an infrared thermocouple or infrared temperature probe, which is a nice way to go. Or you can use some sort of measuring device that actually uses physical connection with the, with the uh, gel itself. And then you can use those to measure the amount of heat that's being generated. On that last measuring device, what you saw was a very thin thermocouple. And thin winds up being sort of a, uh, a relative term. So it's very, very small. The fatter the thermocouple, let's see here. And I'm going to make that a lot fatter. The fatter the thermocouple, the more that thermocouple has to be exposed to the heat source in order to have it cure or, sorry, in order to have it register on how much heat is being generated. So the smaller, the thinner ones, like I just showed you, they're more responsive as opposed to a big fat one, which is less responsive. So with that, we're gonna fade into our next little demonstration, which will involve a curing lamp, thermocouples, and the infrared thermo, thermo probe. So what we'll do is we'll actually use a regular nail form. And in this case here, we're looking at our extreme gel. When we do our testing, we're actually testing in the QC lab. We measure the exothermic reaction of every batch of gel that we make. And what we'll do is we'll actually use 0.25 grams of gel. And we put that 0.25 grams of gel in the little circle that normally pops out of the form. So because I don't have a scale here, and because really it's not going to make that much of a difference on how we do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of gel out of the container. I'm going to put it on the form. And then we're going to brush that around that form a little bit. Can you see that OK? Oh, I'm getting a nod from Kyle. So that is not 0.2 grams, 0.25 grams of gel. But that kind of gives us a little slip layer. I'm going to put a little bit more gel. down onto that form. And again, that's a little bit of gel. So we're going to put down a little bit more. And then I'm going to let that just set for a little bit. While that's setting, I'm going to do the same thing to the other form so it's ready to go when we need it. And we determined that 0.25 grams of gel was the proper amount based on how thick that gel is on top of the form. So if you're doing a fill or even a full set in 
two or three applications, 0.25 grams on a full nail for a full extension, the length of that cutout seem to be about the right thickness. So that one is going to sit there. I'm going to tuck it behind the light. And now we have the gel right there. First things, what first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the infrared thermocouple. So we turn it on. Make sure that we have a readout. I'm getting 76 degrees, so 76 there. And then I'm going to put this into the light. And I'm going to put it out here so I can still read it with the thermocouple. I'm going to turn the light on and then measure it. So I'm actually measuring the gel as it's heating up. And I can see there's a little laser coming off of the end of the temperature probe. So we're at 82.7, 83.1, 83 83.6. And then at some point we're going to accelerate. So 84, 85. And we'll peak out here at some point, but this is 85.4 degrees, 86 degrees. So 86-ish. So that's going to be about our peak. So at 86 degrees, that's our oh, 87. That's our maximum exothermic reaction. We're back down to 86. So that's one way to measure it. So that's our maximum exothermic reaction if you use an infrared thermocouple. Now if you happen to use a digital one. Make sure I have the right probe. So this is the size, obviously, of our thermocouple. It's very, very small. Comparatively speaking, some of the other ones we use in the QC lab are about a sixteenth of an inch across, where this one here is just maybe one quarter of that thickness. We're going to take this sample of gel out. We're going to put this sample of gel in. I'm going to turn this to 60 seconds. What I'm first going to do, I'm going to measure the amount of heat being generated using one thermocouple. And I'm going to put this thermocouple inside the curing light. And the reason why I put that in there in advance is because that will warm up as the curing light warms up. So I'll use the second thermocouple as the differential thermocouple. So that'll give us the difference between the amount of heat that's being generated by the light. And then that amount of heat will be subtracted from the amount of heat being generated by the gel sample itself. So this little piece will go into the gel. And by the way, this is a much more accurate way to measure the amount of heat that's being generated. And I'm going to try and get my hand out of the way. How's that, Kyle? Okay, so we're at 80 degrees. I'm gonna trigger the light on. You can see it's very responsive, right? So we're at 125, 130-ish. Now if I push this, this will actually give us the differential. So we're at 35 degrees differential exothermic reaction. So as the light warms up, what will happen is that will actually heat up the gel more so than just the gel's exothermic reaction heating itself up. As the gel gets hotter, it reacts faster and generates even more heat. So we have to make sure that we try and keep all of this to a minimum. So, and you can see it's coming back down again. So we've already reached our peak and are dropping back down. You can see the advantage of using a much more expensive type of thermometer so that we can actually measure very quickly the reaction rate. So we can even use this to figure out how much of the a potential reaction that did take place actually has taken place. So if we let this whole system now equilibrate back down to ambient temperature and then we trigger the light on again, 
if it's cured 100% of the way, or as much as possible, then we are not going to get any more exothermic reaction coming from the gel. Okay? So that's what we have. That's one of the techniques that we use to measure exothermic reaction. And I'm just going to turn that off. So, if you guys have any questions, what we want to do, I'm not sure which camera I'm looking at there, Kyle, looking at that one. If we have any questions on exothermic reaction and what we do and how we do it, that kind of takes care of that question completely. If you have any questions more on what we do, make comments down below. And we're going to be here to answer your questions, make sure that you have as much knowledge as possible. Uh, if you have anything else, I think we're good to go. Thank you. All right, that's been Jim McConnell, McConnell Labs. Manufacturers of Light Elegance Nail Products, Chemist Corner, on exothermic reactions and how we measure them. Thank you. Bye-bye.